in terms of skeletons in my house, I've got a, a whole horse skeleton, I've got a mole skeleton, an armadillo, an otter, a buzzard, and a monkey, and a Chinese water deer skeleton, <laughs> and two sheep skeletons. I do have a lot of skulls, dogs, cats, grey seals, two common seals, goats, sheep, wallabies, badgers, otters, foxes, bat, frogs, primates, hedgehogs, rats, mice, shrews. Yeah, that's pretty much the top of my head. I'm Ben Garrett and I'm a primatologist working in primate evolution, studying for a PhD at the moment. My passion though skeletons. I started when I was 10. I was a very strange child. I'm not really sure how I know how to put the skeletons together, but there's so few textbooks and there's virtually nobody out there who can do this. It's a case of learning through trial and error. You just get an eye for it. It's just a knack. Some people are very good at maybe bird watching. I guess mine is knowing how to put skeletons together. It's like my superpower. Starting with a whole animal, the first and most important process is to actually strip it down, so it involves lots of dissecting. Quite gruesome, but you have to skin the animal, take out all the organs, take out the flesh, the muscle. It's quite a long process involving different chemicals, different physical processes. My barbecue is used for processing dead stuff. At the moment we've got everything from a cat skull to a seagull to incredibly unusual rear legs. In these tubs and buried around the garden, we actually have some cetacean heads. Now, different whales and dolphins, believe it or not, they're buried in a mixture of horse, elephant and rhino poo. It's actually the best combination in order to get nice, beautiful, clean skulls. From there, you then have a big set of bones which you need to put together. And I admit this looks quite terrifying because from this you'll have to make a whole skeleton. It doesn't come with a set of instructions or place A next to B. It's just a box of bones and it's usually the case that I'll build up a metal framework to actually build the real skeleton around the metal skeleton. Eventually, you get the finished product, like this little European mole here. His tail's not on yet, but he's very, very nearly finished. It's a very long, very fun process. So this is the horse skeleton. It's for a university in the UK and it's for their equine science degree. The reason there's so many bands and lucky bands attached to it is to hold all the ribs in place while they're drying. So far, most of the ribs are attached. There's 18 pairs, 100 elastic bands. There's probably about 10 kilos of metal. It's nowhere near finished yet. Um, it's got lots and lots of work to do. It's taken about 18 months to get this far. So this is my buzzard, just so simple. It took two weeks to clean the actual animal down. And from there, it took just a week to put the skeleton together. Very quick, very simple. And it's one of the nicest projects I've ever worked on. Um, it's a lovely skeleton, it's a really nice posture, which has come out really well. Lots of movement in there, and you really get the essence of the bird itself. That's why this is one of my favorites. Sometimes I get stuff like this, which is an Akafi leg from the Grant Museum in London. Now, it should look nice and clean like this, but you can see it's bright orange. That's fungus, mold, oil, because the guy who cleaned it 100, 150 years ago didn't use a beautiful set of tools to do it very delicately. He just boiled and boiled and boiled until all the flesh was off, but the oil was left in there. Now, what I'll do, I'll treat it with a lot of chemicals, which won't damage the bone, but will get all this horrible gunk out and get it back to as good as new. I guess the favourite skeleton I've ever worked on is a chimpanzee at Bristol Zoo. Because I'm by, by nature a primatologist in my work, it's very nice to work with a primate skeleton. And she had a big bump on her head, and she had an abscess in one tooth. So some skeletons, I think, have character. I've got a Chinese water deer um, that I'm working on right now. And getting the skeleton out, you can actually see that the whole left side of his body was deformed and his whole hip didn't fit into his pelvis. Uh, and you really get a, a feel that an animal that's so physically deformed but it's still a huge male in his prime fighting, you get a real feel for, for who the animal was and what the animal was, I think. <laughs>